Good morning and welcome to Temple of Praise Liverpool Online First Advent Sunday Celebrations. My name is Alfie Jean and I'm just so glad that you have chosen to tune in and worship with us today. God bless you. Now, like I said, it's First Sunday Advent. And the word Advent means the arrival of something or someone important. And this first Advent Sunday is important as we lead up to Christmas Day because it's a time for us to prepare for the celebrations of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's also a time for us to prepare our hearts to welcome the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. First Sunday Advent reflects on hope and it's also a time for us to eagerly look forward in hope to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ because he is coming back again. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this first Sunday Advent, that this is the season when we prepare our hearts, our homes, our surroundings to welcome more of you into our lives. I pray that this day that your spirit will touch us as we worship, that your spirit will encourage us as we seek your face, that, Lord, you will bring a blessing upon all our homes and all our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. In 
A familiar flame is ignited, a flame of hope, to remind us again of the road we have travelled. For the very light that we have kindled exists only because our God once declared that it should be. And though we struggle to make sense of the world that surrounds us, and pathways ahead are shrouded in uncertainty and foreboding. We will not surrender to despair or indifference, for God's purpose prevails even when obscured by our expectations. Its light draws our eyes away from the darkness, the confusion and struggles of this earthly journey not to escape or ignore their reality, but to remember that in every circumstance, God is present. And spurred by the stories of God's hand in our history, inspired by the example of those who have been caught up in his purpose, we open ourselves to be servants of the Most High, to embrace the present, assured of God's faithfulness. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Light has come. 
light has and will overcome. That is the message for today. That light has and will overcome. This is the second Sunday of Advent. The word Advent means waiting. It is the season of expectation, waiting for Jesus to be born. That was 2,000 years ago, but also now waiting for him to return. When he was going back to heaven, he said he will come back. And those of us who are believers, we need to look up, look forward and knowing that he will come back. So it's a time for us, Advent, to think about the fact that he's going to come back. Now, the themes, historically, the four themes used by churches all over the world during Advent are the following. Hope, love, joy, and peace. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. The reading you have heard is from Isaiah chapter 9. It beautifully captures the ministry of one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, the ministry of justice and hope. Prophet Isaiah was a man who spoke about justice and hope. And in this passage, we read one of the most significant prophecies that Isaiah made, the coming of the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to Israel, but not only to Israel, but to the whole world. In verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. In verse 2, it started with, with saying, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Ah, yes, I, I'll explain the context um, uh, later in my, in my message. But, you know, th th this... The, the, that message to the people it was to the people walking in darkness of devastation. They had been, um, the, their, their, the cities had been invaded and they were uh, devastated. The, the land was like desert. So let me start with some exposition about darkness. Because when you talk about light, you cannot talk about light without talking about darkness. He says, he says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. You know, it doesn't matter how small the, the light is. When you put it on, it doesn't matter how deep the dark, darkness is. That light will begin to break through where it's lit. In, in, in us, as, as people made by God, there are many problems that we have with darkness. Indeed, from the time we were, we were born, we were born into, in, into a world that was it, it, full of darkness. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we read that at creation, the first thing God addressed was darkness. He said, let there be light, and there was light, and he separated the light from the darkness. So no creation could happen until God had separated, said, let there be light, and then separated the light from the darkness. It is not surprising, therefore, that, that in, diff, in our lives, there are so many aspects of darkness that, that prevail. If we look around us now in 2022, if we, the darkness has different forms. There is the physical form of darkness. Uh, yes, like it said, you know, I don't know about you, but if, if you are in a place that's dark, without any light for a long time. How do you feel? You'll feel vulnerable. Uh, when, when you're in a, and, and then fear overtakes us. You see, when we're in a place that's dark, when you're in the forest, you suddenly begin to panic. Um, we can't see where we're going and, and you become vulnerable. And if it's prolonged, you know what happens? If you're in a place that's dark and you can't get out of it, wow, you begin to panic and hope starts going up. So physical darkness can bring about this, this anxiety and fear. Also, situational darkness can have the same impact. When you're trapped in a situation you can't get out of, you feel hemmed in and you are in a dark place. It's like darkness. Then there's emotional and mental. Uh, some people who, who um, have mental challenges, depression, for instance, 
they, they experience this, this imagery of being in a dark place, of being alone, where hope is diminished. No way of, of getting out. That feeling of being trapped. Mental um, uh, darkness, emotional darkness. And of course, there is spiritual. There is spiritual darkness where one is lost and without hope. When you are separated from, from God who made you and, and you just have no concept of, of, of spirituality, no concept of where you are going after eternity. That's a darkness. That's a spiritual darkness. If you want to understand what this feels like, talking about darkness, you know, there are places on earth now that express darkness for up to six months each year in Antarctica, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, and also in some countries in the Northern Hemisphere, like Norway, Russia, Alaska, and in the U.S., uh, Alaska and the U.S., you know, what, what What keeps them going? Imagine when you're in this place where you know the sun is going to shine for six months. So what have you ever wondered, what is it that keeps those people going for six months? I'll say to you, it is that hope and that certainty that it, when that period is over, light will come. Light will come that that period of darkness will not last forever. And, you know, that's hope. That's hope. And Isaiah captures this so beautifully in chapter 9, verse 1. You know what he said? He said, he said, nevertheless, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. It won't go on forever. So whatever state of despair or hopelessness or darkness you feel feeling up, the word of God to you today is that it will not go on forever. Isaiah goes on, he says, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies beyond the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Wow, what a, what a message. What a message to those people who had been in a state of despair and crushed and hopelessness. The what to them, this was 800 years before the Lord Jesus came, was that, yes, you are in a state now of darkness, but it will not last. Light will come. 800 years later, it happened in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. As uh, Matthew recorded, he said, and I read to you from verse 14, uh, sorry, chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4 from verse 12. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Capernaum beside the Sea of Galilee in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light for them, a light has shined. And it says in verse 17, from then on, Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. You know, historically, there were two Galilees. One was for the Jews and the other half was for the Gentiles. Twenty cities of Galilee had been given by King Solomon to, to the king of, of Tyre, um, Hiram. Hiram is, 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 is um, in, in Lebanon. So you, this is the prophetic word that Isaiah, so Isaiah was actually speaking to that part of Lebanon where uh, many Gentiles lived. And amazing thing is that you find that 800 years later, when the Lord Jesus had been baptized and, and the Holy Spirit had come upon him, and, and then the news came that um, John the Baptist, who baptized the Lord Jesus, um, was had been arrested. The Lord Jesus, soon after baptism, he then withdrew from um, Nazareth and went to 
the same Galilee, Galilee of the, the Gentiles, the same area that Isaiah had prophesied. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali had been conquered and abandoned as a desert without hope. But Isaiah saw Christ coming into it. The light would come into its darkness. A child will be born to us. A son given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace would never end. He would rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. This was the Lord Jesus Isaiah had been talking about. The wonderful thing is, as the Lord Jesus, it was from Capernaum that he then went out and began to preach. It was from there that the, the proclamation of salvation to the whole world, the light of the world, would come forth from that same area that prophet Isaiah had prophesied. As you look beyond, as we look into 2023, what do we see? What do we see? What state are we in? Let's look at the internationally. What do we see? Wars and famines and earthquakes. You might say all these things have been there for forever. But there's an intensity of what we're seeing right now. With the war in Ukraine and, and also the state of the environment and everything is changing around us. What do we see in nations? If, if where you live is like us in the UK, there's hunger. It's cold and no heating. And, and, and many people are, are ex all over the world. There are problems of floods and, and all sorts of things, landslides and so on and so forth. In individual lives. Let's come from nations to individual lives. What do we see? So much pain, so much suffering. You may be experiencing that as you listen. In your life, as you're listening now, what do you see? As you're looking forward to 2023, what do you see? What state are you in now? Situational darkness. There are some that are trapped. You feel trapped. You can't see a way out. That, that situation by relationships or, or health or jobs or finances, it might be emotional. Maybe you are in a state of depression or downheartedness or other forms of emotional challenge. The good news is this. Also, there might be spiritual darkness, ignorant of the God who made you and, and, and lo lo loves you so much. Or worse still, you are involved in unwholesome activities of the occult. These are all forms of darkness. Spiritual, emotional, spiritual, um, situational, physical. But the good news of Advent is this. That as the saying goes, there is light at the end of your tunnel. Jesus is the light you need. Just as he showed up in the Galilee of the Gentiles, he's ready to show up for you. This is the season for your deliverance. Call on him and he'll answer you. It will not last forever. As that prophecy came through Isaiah, I believe God is speaking that word to you right now. Call on him. Light is about to come. Light is going to come. In, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 12, this is the promise of the Lord Jesus. Keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus said this. He said, you parents, if your children ask you for a loaf of bread, 
Do you give them a stone instead? No, God will hear you. Lift up your, 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 your face. Lift up your heads and see. Your Savior is coming. You know, he's called the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's what he's called. In that passage, he's, he's called the, the mighty God. You see, he has power to change the situation in your life. He's called the Prince of Peace. He has power to bring peace into your situation, into the state of darkness you're in. It says of his kingdom, there will be no end. Oh, yes. You see, when Christ comes and rules over our lives, then he, he rules and he brings peace. So whatever state of darkness you're in today, I want you to just bow your head and just pray with me right now. Open your heart and, and believe God. Believe that prophetic word that God brought through Isaiah that's still available for us today. That prophecy of the light that comes. It says the people in darkness have seen a great light. That light that comes into the state of darkness we're in. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. That word that affirms to us that you will not leave us in darkness. At the time of creation, the first thing you did was to say, let that be light. I speak that word into the lives of those who listen right now. Those who feel in a state of confusion and darkness. Lord, may they hear you say to them, let there be light. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Will you come now into their situation and bring your light? And as you come in, Lord, after you, you made light, Father God, you, you separated the light from the darkness. In the name of Jesus, we speak now that that light will be separated and darkness will depart. Darkness will be separated from that, that, that heart into which you bring your light today. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Where there's been despair, bring your peace. Where hope has gone, restore that hope. Let the heart that's, that's been crushed, let it now be revived with hope in the name of Jesus. It says the government will rest on your shoulders. Lord, Today, I pray that these that hear will place the government of their lives upon your shoulders. That they may believe that from today, you've got them. That you carry them in the palm of your arms because you love them. It is said that you'll be called Wonderful Counselor. Lord, will you speak your word to them that they might hear your voice. And be filled with your peace. As we move into Christmas, I pray, Father, that our hearts will be filled with your love and your joy. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.
we've come to the end of this wonderful celebration and you know what a, a wonderful word of encouragement that was. I pray it blessed all of you as it did me. If you have any questions regarding faith, Advent, you want to know anything about Temple of Praise Liverpool, then we would be really happy to hear from you. Should be scrolling along right now. Reach out to us at connect at ljmaoc.org and we'll get right back to you. Now, over the next couple of weeks, we've got so many wonderful events taking place in Temple of Praise, um, in the actual building. Um, so why not log some of these dates that you're going to see now? And, and come along, come along and celebrate this Christmas season with us at Temple of Praise.